Well, would you stand to your feet today as we begin the service through Scripture? And just like usual, Brad is always on the same page as me. It's not Brad is on the same page with me naturally. Brad is on the same page with me spiritually. And when you align with the Holy Spirit, God speaks, and you never talk about the messages, but they always align. And I'm so grateful for Brad. The Scripture for today is 1 Chronicles 4.10, the prayer of Jabez. <laughs> I'm not making this up. You can look at my notes if you want to. Speaking this over our church. I spoke it over our church last week. He was the one, Jabez, who prayed to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And God granted his request. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the prayer of Jabez. Lord, we speak that over our church, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you would bless us this year, that you're going to expand our territory. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you're with us in all that we do, and you're protecting us from all harm. Lord, we just come to you, Lord, with a heart of gratefulness and thanksgiving and expectation of what you are going to do in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing through the Coots Boys, Lord. I am so encouraged by what you're doing in Tony and Chris's life, Lord. Father, I pray that you would use their voice to go far, Lord. I pray that you would use their voice to be magnified in that place, Lord. I thank you that other prisoners are coming to you in faith in Jesus this year. Father, I pray that you'd set the captives free in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen them. I pray that you would empower them, Lord. Protect them as you have, Lord. I'm so grateful for all that you've done in their lives, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for those that are persecuted worldwide. We think of the nation of Israel. We pray for the nation of Israel and, the, and Jerusalem, Lord. We pray for peace in Jerusalem. Father, we pray for the Israelites and we pray for the Palestinians that are caught, Lord, in the middle of everything that's going on. Father, we think of those that are sick today, Lord, that can't be with us. We think of Bob and Joan, Lord, as Bob is recovering at home, Father. I pray that you would heal that ankle in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would make it stronger than it was than the day he was born, Lord. Thank you that you're knitting everything together, all the necessary muscle and fibers of his being. We thank you for all that you're going to do, Lord. We praise you. We love you. We worship you today, Lord. Father, we welcome your Holy Spirit here. I pray that your Holy Spirit would fill this place. I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak through me. Lord, it's not, it's not my words. It's your words. Father, I pray today that you would anoint me. I pray that you would strengthen me. I pray that you would give me a new, fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit today, Lord. Pray as we leave this place that we wouldn't leave this place the same, but we would leave this place different. We thank you for that. We praise you for that in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. You may be seated. Jason, I might need a bit more monitor up here if you can. I like to hear myself. Even if nobody else likes to hear me, I like to hear myself. Praise the Lord. But you guys like to hear me because you're here on a cold winter day when you could have used snow as an excuse. Amen? You are the true saved ones. <laughs> I didn't even have to say it. Everyone said amen. Would you already said amen? Praise the Lord. Don't tell anybody else that's not here today. Or maybe an edit, right, Jason? I don't know about that. Uh, we got another strike in our YouTube account. And uh, <laughs> for some of the things that I've said. And so we got a warning, we got a strike. And if it's like baseball, I got two more strikes and then I'm out. So uh, <laughs> we got Rumble that we can use and other things. But uh, you know what? If we're getting strikes, I just know that it's because we're doing the right thing. Amen? Amen. Well, this message, I believe, is a message from the Lord. I, I, was, I was praying that the Lord would give me a message for you that you need in this season of time, and the season that we're going into is such an important season. How many know that this next few days, few weeks, few months are so important? In the life of the church, in the world, whatever is going on, uh, I believe God wants to do some amazing things. I want to talk to you today about multiplication. We are called 
to multiply. We are called to multiply. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary says that multiplication is to become greater in number. You see, God isn't calling you to be stagnant like a pond. He's calling you to be a river where the Holy Spirit is constantly flowing in and out of your life. Amen? We are called by God to multiply. It's been that way since the very beginning. And we can look at the story of Adam and Eve from the book of Genesis. If you want to turn to your Bibles, right to the beginning, Genesis 1.26. Genesis 1.26. God commanded Adam and Eve to multiply. And he said in verse 26, Then God said, Let us, plural, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. Many questions people have about that. Well, who's the us? Well, we believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so that is what that scripture is referring to. Pretty amazing that our Heavenly Father has designed us to be in His image. Isn't that awesome? To be like Him, to look like Him, to think like Him, to be set apart like He is. It says, They will reign over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the livestock, and all the wild animals of the earth and all the small animals that scurry on the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, not 70 other genders. Male and female, he created them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brad's jumping to the third strike already. <laughs> that didn't take long, 30 seconds into the sermon. <laughs> oh, amen. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and all the animals that scurry along the ground. It is so important to remember God didn't just ask us to have children to multiply, but he wanted us to govern the earth. What an important responsibility that that is for us is we were called to govern the earth. You see, God is always calling us higher. And my job is, is to call you higher because he's called me higher. I don't want to see you stay in a stagnant, stinky pond. I want to see you be a river of life that comes out of you. I want to see the Holy Spirit on you, just like when Jesus went up onto the Mount of Transfiguration, and the light was so bright that was on him. And I, I, I want that for you. I want you to have such a bright Holy Spirit light on you that people are going, there is something different about those people. Those people are truly set apart as the remnant. Amen? You see, God gave man and woman dominion over the earth, and everything in it is what the New King James Version says what a responsibility jesus said in luke 12 48 when someone has been given much much will be required in return and when someone has been entrusted with much even more will be required how many know that's pretty important that god has entrusted us to look after the earth amen then god said in verse 29 of genesis look i have given you every seed bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. And I have given you every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and everything that has life. And that is what happened. Then God spoke over all that he had made. And he saw that it was very good. Evening passed and morning came marking the sixth day of creation. I said it to our, our street church team. I said, you know, I believe on the sixth day, it didn't really make it into the scripture, but I believe on the sixth day God created caffeine too. <laughs> and I'm so thankful for coffee on a hot, on a cold day. Hot coffee on a cold day. Amen? Amen. You see, God used Adam and Eve, only two people. What an amazing thing. He used two people to multiply the earth to where it is today. 
You see, God always takes something small and makes it into something magnificent, doesn't he? Jesus only used two disciples to get the word of God all across the world, to preach the gospel to everyone in the world. From the beginning, God has given us everything that we need. Just say it with me today. I have everything that I need. Amen. You see, we say later on in the book of Genesis, God promises to multiply Abraham. What a great story of multiplication. God chose to use Abraham, and at the time his name was Abram. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. And it says, The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family. Go to the land that I will show you. So he had to be obedient there, right? Go to the land. Didn't say stay. Didn't say be comfortable. Go to the land that I will show you. And because I will send you to this land, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. You will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. What a promise for us. We have that Abrahamic promise. Amen? All the families on earth will be blessed through you. We say later on in Genesis, God changed Abram's name to Abraham. Abraham means a father of a multitude. There is power in a name. Genesis 17, 1 to 8 says, Genesis 17, 1 to 8 says, when Abraham was, when Abram was 99 years old how many know that's a long life 99 years old even though some of them lived forever it seems back then the lord appeared to him and said i am el shaddai god almighty serve me faithfully and live a blameless life i will make a covenant with you by which i want you to hear this church this isn't some junky guarantee on the back of some box I want you to hear me. This isn't some junky guarantee that you get from some brutal salesman that's trying to sell you something that's not going to work. He says, I guarantee you, I will give you countless descendants. Guaranteed countless descendants. At this, Abram fell on his face to the ground. Then God said to him, this is my covenant I make with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I'm changing your name. You will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham. For you will be the father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful. Just say it with me today. Just say it with me. God, make me extremely fruitful. You know, I was talking to somebody this week, and how come whenever we talk to each other, how are you doing? Oh, I'm so busy. Right? You guys are laughing because you know it's true. How was your week? Oh, I'm so busy. Well, how about we change that into saying I'm so busy? How about we change that into saying I'm extremely fruitful? I'm extremely fruitful. It changes the way you speak because how many know you can be busy going in circles doing nothing? The same people I talk to go, oh, I'm so busy. How was your day? Oh, I was on Facebook the whole day. So how many know you can be busy doing nothing, but I don't want to be busy. I want to be fruitful. Wouldn't that change your life if you go to work tomorrow? Or you go to, you're all walking out in the community and somebody sees you and they go, how are you doing today? Instead of saying, I'm so busy, you start saying, I'm extremely fruitful. God is blessing me. It changes everything amen extremely fruitful so we have that promise from abraham i will make you extremely fruitful your descendants will become many nations and kings will be among them amen i will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation this is the everlasting covenant i will always be your god and the god of descent your descendants after you and i will give you the entire land of canaan 
where you now live as a foreigner to you and to your descendants. It will be their possession forever, and I will be their God. You see, the Abrahamic covenant included a promise of land. It had a promise of land for God's people. And just like I spoke two weeks ago and I spoke last week, God is in the midst of doing something amazing. I believe God's given us property and God's given us land. In Jesus' name. That we don't have to pay for. That literally I can't dance and I can't sing. But the Lord's going to give it to us for a song and a dance. Why? Because that is my allotment from Abraham. That is given to me as a promise through Abraham. That's not me saying something that's not scriptural. That is backed by scripture. And if it's in the Bible, God's promises are always true. God's promises are yes and amen. How many know his, his word never returns void? It accomplishes some things. No, it accomplishes everything. Everything, everything it's set out to do. My faith is in my God who never fails me. Amen? You see, God gave Abraham land that he could see, but he gave him land that he couldn't see as well. It took faith for Abraham to believe the promises of God, the unconditional covenant that would pass and nothing would stop it. God gave Abraham the promise of many descendants. Do you know when God gave that promise to Abraham? Of the many descendants. He said you'd have as many descendants as the dust of the earth. How many know that's a lot of descendants? It's a pretty big family gathering, isn't it? You would have more descendants than all the dust of the earth, he said. But did Abraham have children at that time? They were old. He was 99 years old at that time. And God said, you're going to be fruitful. All these nations are going to come from you. And they didn't even have children. But it took faith to believe that. Yet his faith did not waver. Even after God asked Abraham for his one and only son. Remember remember Isaac. He gave him his one and only son after all those years. He was 99 years old. and That's that's pretty old to have children, isn't it? Imagine running after children at 99 years old. Sarah was 100. And they conceived and had children. And he had his one and only son, and then God led him up the mountain. Remember the story, everybody, where God led him up the mountain and said to him, will you sacrifice your son for me? Your one and only son. It was a beautiful picture of what God did for us through Jesus Christ, willing to sacrifice his one and only son. Can you imagine waiting for a baby or waiting for a child for so many years only to have that child sacrificed? So as Abraham was walking up the mountain, Isaac said to him, how many remember that story? Isaac said to him, well, we have all the wood and everything, but where's the sacrifice? And remember what Abraham's words were. God will provide. God will provide. But did it come early? No. He brought Isaac up to the mountain and they grabbed the the wood and everything and the Bible says he started to make this altar where he was ready to sacrifice Isaac on. The Bible says he grabbed his knife, had up over his head. He was ready to kill his son for God. And then God said, stop. Stop. Now I know that you will follow me. Now I know that you will obey me. Just over there, God provided a ram in the thicket that became the offering. Amen? What an amazing sacrifice that Abraham was willing to make. But it was through faith. Everyone say, through faith. It was through faith that God did that through his life. Romans 4, 20 to 25 says, Romans 4, 20 to 25 says, Abraham never wavered. What an amazing thing. He never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. And this brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. When God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit. Assuring us that God also counts us as righteous if we believe in him. The one who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. 
He was handed over to die because of our sins. And he was raised to life to make us right with God. Amen? The blessing of Abraham is passed down to Isaac. It's passed down to Jacob. And it's passed down to all of us. We have that blessing because of Abraham's faith. But let's look at what God did through Isaac for, through just a moment here. Turn to your Bible to Genesis 26, 1 to 6. Genesis 26, 1 to 6. Do you know I'm almost matching with my bio steel today? Yeah. There's a free ad for bio steel again. <laughs> Genesis 26, 1 to 6. A severe famine now struck the land, as it had happened before in Abraham's time. So Isaac moved to Gerar, where Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, lived. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt, but do as I tell you. How many know it's good to listen to the Lord? Live here as a foreigner in this land, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. I hereby confirm that I will give you all these lands to you and your descendants, just as I solemnly promised to Abraham your father. I will cause your descendants to become as numerous as the stars of the sky. I will give them these lands, and through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. I will do this because Abraham listened to me and obeyed all of my requirements. So good. He obeyed all of my commands, decrees, and instructions. So, so Isaac stayed in Gerar. Gerar is where the blessing started. It's where there was a famine in the land. God appeared to Isaac and told him to not go to Egypt but to remain in the land. How many know it's important to listen to the Lord? It may look greener on the other side and God may be call, you may feel that God is calling you somewhere else. You may feel that God is calling you to do something but how many know our feelings will lead us astray? We must trust the Word of God. We must hear from God. We can't be going to the left or to the right. We've got to go on the road that God has called us to go on. Amen? So God promised to be with Isaac and bless him and give the land of Isaac, give the land to Isaac's descendants. God reaffirmed his covenant that he made with Abraham, say he would make descendants as numerous as the stars and bless the nations of the earth around them. I want you to get this. This is the season that we're in right now, church. This is it. Verse 12. When Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more the grain than he planted, for the Lord blessed him. He prospered in famine. He prospered when nobody else was prospering because he what? Just like Brad said in the message, he sowed in those times. He sowed in famine. He sowed when the bills were coming in from the CRA, he sowed when things were getting tough. He sowed when it was like, you can't sow right now because you've got to keep everything to yourself. He trusts the Lord. He, he trusts the Lord that the Lord would provide. I'm believing this year that, that we're going to reap a hundredfold in some areas that God is going to call us to this year in Jesus' name. All the sowing that we've done on the streets of Red Deer, all the sowing of preaching the Word of God faithfully, all the sowing of standing for truth and righteousness, God sees everything. And I believe God is going to bless us and God is going to bless you that have been obedient a hundredfold this year in Jesus' name. Now, I'm just getting started. This is really an exciting message. Verse 13, he became a very rich man, and wealth his wealth continued to grow. He acquired many flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle, and servants that the Philistines became so jealous of him. So the Philistines started filling up Isaac's wells with dirt. As he was digging a well, they'd fill up another well. They'd fill it up. As soon as he'd dig a well, they'd fill it up with dirt. And if you can look at it back then, uh, filling up somebody's well was an actual act of war. It was an actual act of war between two separate nations if you, filled in, if you filled in their wells. So finally, in verse 16, Abimelech ordered Isaac to leave the country. He said, go somewhere else, he said, for you have become too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away to the Gerar Valley where he set up tents and settled down. He reopened the wells that had been dug. 
which the Philistines had filled after Abraham's death. Isaac also restored the names of Abraham that he had given them. Isaac's servants also dug in the Jerah Valley and discovered fresh water. Back then, church, water was like the oil in Alberta. Water was so precious, it was like what oil is to our province. It was that valuable. Water was such a valuable commodity. Verse 20, it says, But then the shepherds from Jerah came and claimed the spring. This is our water, they said. Doesn't that sound familiar? The federal government saying, yeah, that doesn't belong to you. We're just going to try to shut your water off. Try to shut it down is what they're trying to do. They argued over it with Isaac's herdmen. So Isaac named the well Esak, which means argument. (laughs) Makes sense. Isaac's men then dug another well. Are you following me, church? They dug another well. As much as they filled in their wells, they kept digging more wells. But again, there was a dispute over it. So Isaac named it Sitna, which means hostility. Abandoning that one, Isaac moved on and dug another well. There was time, there was time, there was, this time there was no dispute over it. So Isaac named the place Rehoboth, which means open space. For he said, at last the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in this land. Listen, church, God has called us to dig wells in this season of time. How many know the enemy is trying to fill up our wells right now? The enemy is trying to come with sand and everything. Everything we're planting, he's trying to fill up the wells. But guess what we're going to do? The more he starts filling up our wells, the more wells we're going to dig in this time. In Jesus' name. We're digging more wells for the homeless. We're digging more wells for the addicted. We're digging more wells for the afflicted. Are you hearing me today? We're digging more wells for the hurting. We're digging more wells for the families of this community. We're digging more wells for the youth. We're digging more wells for the children. We're digging more wells for Jesus Christ. We're digging more wells for people to come in salvation. We're digging more wells for people to be whole. We're digging more wells of hopelessness. We are digging wells in this season of time. We're not shrinking back. We're digging. Oh, and does it get tired? Yes, it gets tiring. Does it get tiring of plowing all the time? Yes, it gets tiring. But this is a season of plowing. This is a season of plowing and sowing, and we must, what we, what we sow, we will reap. And let me tell you something. There's a lot of people that are going to reap some bad stuff that's coming. They haven't been ready. They haven't been in God's word. They haven't been in prayer. They haven't been worshiping him. What's coming is going to take them out. But for those of us that have sown in righteousness, for those of us that have sown in faith, for those of us that have, that have not let this, this time period distract us from anything, no, 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 you come at us financially. You come at us throwing stones at us. You threaten my life. Get, get behind me, Satan. I'm going to keep digging some more wells. I'm just going to keep digging some more wells, digging some more wells. If you say we can't be over there, we're going to go dig some more wells somewhere else. Amen? So have your shovel ready. We're going to dig some wells. I said it last week. Man, pastor gets a crazy look in his eye and people go, "Uh uh-oh. He's got a crazy look in his eye and I go, I'm just being honest. This is the season where I'm running after Jesus. And if you get in my way, I'm going to run you over. If if you don't want to follow Jesus in this season, get out of my way because I am going straight for him and nothing is going to stop me in Jesus' name. That might be a warning for anybody that might not want to follow Jesus in this season. Amen? That should be your heart too. Nothing's going to stop me from pursuing Jesus. You see, Jesus, Jesus always multiplied everything, didn't he? Look at what he did through Abraham. Look what he did through Isaac. But Jesus always multiplied his disciples. He multiplied food. Everything was about multiplication. You see, Jesus wants to use what's in my hands and your hands today. He wants to multiply it. But how many know we have different things in our hands? How many know we're called to hold different things in this season? Everybody has different gifts. Everyone has different abilities. Everyone has different financial. uh, God's blessed you differently financially. Some have been called to business. Some have been called to different um, positions. But God has all called us the same. And he's asking to use what's in our hands. And I love the story of John 
6, verse 9. John 6, verse 9. And it says, starting in chapter, or verse 1, it says, After this, Jesus crossed over the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as Tiberus. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed a hill and sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus saw a huge crowd of people looking to him. Turning to Philip, I love this part, church. I want you to follow me on this. He says, turning to Philip, he asked them, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? Don't you think Jesus knew the answer to that already? He's God. Of course he knew the answer to that. He said, where are we going to do this? He was testing Philip, verse 6. For he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Man, that is an attitude that you hear sometimes, and I don't want that attitude to be in the church at all. I don't want that attitude here that says, oh, it's too difficult. It costs too much money. It's too many, too many people serving. Do you know how hard that is? I don't want people coming in here with a lack of faith like that. You know, people told me that when we started street church. You're going to start street church on Wednesday? Nobody's going to come. You're going to start street church. Who's going to, who's going to supply the food? You're going to start street church on a Wednesday. Who's going to volunteer? You're going to start street church on a Wednesday. Is anybody going to come? Well, how many know we just went step forward in faith? We stepped forward to what God was calling us to do. We were unwavering and standing for what God's promise was to us in that season of time. It looked impossible to everybody else. They go, this is a small church that's going to start a ministry like this. But how many know, look what God has done today. Look at the miracles that have happened. People being set free from fentanyl, heroin, people that are confessing Jesus as their Lord and Savior, getting set free from addictions every single week, church. We don't have time for Phillips that go, oh no, this isn't going to work. I'm warning you right now. There's things that I know that are coming down and I can't tell you yet. But when they come down, you better be ready to receive what God has to do. It is going to be absolutely amazing and God will blow your minds in Jesus' name. Amen? You see, with God, there is always enough. Say that with me. With God, there's always enough. There's always enough. God's work done God's way will never lack God's supply. Verse 8, then Andrew, Simon's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is it with this huge crowd? I love this. The miracle started with a young boy in a lunch church. The miracle didn't start with somebody that came that had enough money to buy all the fish and buy all the bread. No, no, God used a little boy with the lunch. Jesus used a little boy. Don't you think Jesus could have just gone like that and it would have been done? But Jesus saw this little boy and said, what you have in your hands, son, we will use to bless all of these people. Don't believe what's in your hand isn't enough. The devil will always say, oh, I don't have enough. I can't offer enough. I'm not talented. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough abilities. The devil will always try to speak that to you. But let me tell you something. If Jesus can use a young boy to feed the 5,000, he can use you to accomplish everything he has set out to do. Amen? This should be breathing life into you today. You see, God always uses the ordinary to, to do the extraordinary. Always. Verse 10, he says, Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered 5,000. So the scriptures are really clear. 5,000 men, because the men would eat separately from the women and children in those days. So how many know, many scholars believe there was 15 to 20,000 people that were fed that day. 15 to 20,000 people that were fed with some loaves of bread and some fish. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish. And they ate as much as they wanted. Everyone was full. Jesus told his disciples, now gather all the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. Praise the Lord. So they picked up the pieces and filled the 12 baskets with scraps 
left by the people who had eaten the five barley loaves. Amen? Jesus didn't just meet the need. Jesus exceeded their need. That is the God that we serve. It is not by might. It is not by power. But it is by my spirit, says the Lord God Almighty. Come on, church. Nothing is impossible for my God. Nothing is impossible for my God. For with God, all things are possible. The Bible says he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Come on, church. There is nothing that is too hard for our God. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now all glory be to God who is able by his mighty power working within us to accomplish infinitely more than he might, we might ask or think. God has more for us if we would only ask and believe. God has more for us if you would only obey. God has more for us if you would only trust him. God has more to expand your territory this year. You see, when I'm saying he's expanding the remnant territory, he's expanding your territory too, but you have to be obedient as he expands your territory. Amen? The Bible says we have not because we ask not. God wants to do so much more in your life. He wants to give the church so much more. He wants to give you so much more in all areas of your life. He wants to bring your callings to fruition during this time. He wants to do so much. I want you to picture this for a moment with me. When you see a big waterfall, man, I went to Niagara Falls, and when you, we stand at Niagara Falls, and you see the water, right? It's just crushing, and it's nonstop crushing water. It, it, the tap never one, runs dry. It's the same with the Lord. His tap doesn't run dry. What he has for me and he has for you is like a waterfall, a blessing, a waterfall of the Holy Spirit. But do you know how we come to the Lord? To the waterfall? We come to the Lord, with, to the waterfall, and we go, Lord, we're ready to receive all that you have. And we come with our little Dixie cup. We come with our little Dixie cup and we go, Lord, I'm ready for all that you have for me. Fill up my cup. And God's going, why did you come to me with a Dixie cup? Look at this whole waterfall that's flowing nonstop. Millions of gallons per second are flowing through this waterfall. Why aren't you coming ready to receive all that I have for you? Why aren't you spiritually ready? Why aren't you in my, the Word of God? Why aren't you reading the Bible to receive all that I have for you? Why aren't you in prayer seeking all that I have for you? See, the only reason why God has done amazing things through the remnant, the only reason, is because it started with prayer. Prayer is not our spare tire. Prayer is our steering wheel. And I shared the story last week on the anniversary. All the scriptures written on both sides of this, this building. This building was prayed over way before I knew that I would be here. And Brad's story is true. He knew that him, we would always be together in ministry. I didn't know that. He did. God spoke to him years ago that, that would happen. So when I approached him and said, hey, God's calling me to plant a church. Of course he is. But it all started with prayer. You see, God was able to use my life and I was able to be used by him and be ready for all that he had for me. Are you ready for all that God has for you in this season, church? You see, the waterfall doesn't stay stagnant. It doesn't stay in one place. It's always moving. It's always flowing. Our prayer must be today, Lord, I need more of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I need more of your presence. Lord, would you fill me up from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet? Every day when I wake up out of bed, I say, Lord Jesus, before my feet hit the ground today, I pray that you'd fill me up with your Holy Spirit. I pray that you'd fill me up from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I pray that you would use me to be a blessing to everybody that I come in contact with. I pray that my life would give you honor and glory today. How much would your life change if you prayed that, church? How much would your life change every day if you said, Lord, I want you to use my life? People always say to me, Brad was talking about divine opportunities. People always say, man, you have divine opportunities all the time. 
I ask for them. What a simple concept. Lord, please use me today. Please use me. My time is not my own. Some of you need to just give that back to the Lord today and say, my time is not my own. My job is not my own. My business is not my own. My family's not even my own. Oh, that's a big one. My house is not my own. My life, the reason why I have breath in my lungs is to give him all the praise and give him all the glory. Amen? Just say this with me today. My life is not called to be a pond. My life is called to be a river with endless water pouring out from the, lo- from the living water given to me by Jesus Christ. Amen? We must bring our lives into the alignment for what God wants to do. Man, God's given me a picture of what he wants to do through the church this year. I'm so excited, and I go, Lord, help me to be able to take it all in. But this is a season, church, where we go from, if you're a follower, you go to a leader. This is a season where you take the step forward. No, no, there's no longer pew sitting. There's no longer sitting on the bench and going, well, I'll let everybody else play. Now's the time to get into the game. Now's the time to get onto the field and say, Lord, use me. Some of you have so many skills and abilities and you're not using them for the Lord. God is asking you, will you be faithful in the season? Because if you use them, I will multiply everything else in your life. He wants you to use what's in your hand. Maybe it's just the lunch that you have, like the little boy. Maybe that's all you have. But he wants you to be faithful today in everything that you have. And he will bless you beyond belief. Amen? Amen. Well, I want to prepare you right now. We're, we're going to go into communion as a church. So I'd like to invite Daryl up uh, just to play in the background. And uh, I don't know if the ushers are ready with the, with the little communion cups. They're going to pass them around to you uh, shortly here. But I feel like it's important that we do communion today, that we are in unity with the Lord as we move forward in this season. This season of The Lord's coming to bless. The Lord is blessing us. He's expanding our territory. He's walking with us, and he's protecting us. But I believe as we go into prayer tomorrow, tomorrow might be the most important prayer season that we've ever stepped into as the remnant. As we pray tomorrow all day, as we come and we seek the Lord's presence, as we battle for the children of our land, as we battle against the demonic forces of this land, as we battle for those that need Jesus, We battle for the hopeless. So important that we're in unity together. You guys can go ahead and pass the the buckets. So today as we take communion, I want to give you a scripture before you begin. And it comes from 1 Corinthians, verse 11. I'm going to start in verse 27. I want you to listen to me, church. It says, if anyone eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, They are guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. That's why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread and drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment on yourself. That's why many of you are weak and sick, and some have even died. So today, church, the the Lord's Supper is for believers, for those that Believe in Jesus Christ as Lord. That's what the Lord's Supper is for. If you don't believe in Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity right now to confess Him as Lord and Savior. You see, God sent His only Son. I talked about the sacrifice earlier. His one and only Son to this earth. He sacrificed His one and only Son that we may have life and life more eternal. You see, Jesus walked this earth he lived the life that we should have lived he died the death that we should have died in our place three days later jesus rose from the dead proving that he is the son of god to all those that repent and call on his name and so today what a beautiful moment this would be if there's somebody here that has never accepted jesus you've never asked jesus to be your lord and savior today is your day the bible says for salvation if you believe in your heart 
that the Lord God raised Jesus from the dead. And if you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. So I want to know if there's anybody here that has never accepted Jesus today. Maybe today is your day. I would just ask that you'd raise your hand up with mine. I'm not going to ask you to step out of your seats, but if there's anybody here that has never confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, would you raise your hand up as high as I can see it today? As high as I can see it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 11.23 says, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks for, to God for it. Then he broke it to pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you just take the, the wafer that's in the top of the cup? with me and let's partake together Lord we thank you Lord for your broken body for us thank you for every lash that you took on your back Thank you for that by Jesus' stripes we are healed. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so much that you endured the suffering on the cross. You endured betrayal and you endured everything for our, for our good, Lord. We thank you for that. Lord, we honor you for that sacrifice today, Jesus. We love you. Praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Before we take the cup that represents the blood of Jesus, I want you just to take a moment and just sit in silence. And if there's anything in your heart maybe that you need to forgive a brother or you need to forgive somebody, maybe just take a moment and just make sure your heart is right with the Lord before we receive the, the juice which represents the blood of Christ. Just take a moment with him right now. If there's any offense in you, bring it towards the Lord. Ask Him to forgive you. Repent of that sin. Ask Him to cleanse you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blood which is represented by the juice that we drink today. Church, would you, would you drink this together? The Lord says, in the same way he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant between God and his people in agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For everyone... Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Let's partake of it together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your blood. Thank you that your blood is the, is the, is the only thing that cleanses us of all of our sin and all of our unrighteousness. Thank you for the blood that gives us life. Thank you for the blood that protects us. We thank you for your blood that was shed that we may have eternal life on this earth and eternal life with you forevermore. We thank you for all that you're doing, Jesus. We love you. We thank you for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Would you stand to your feet as we worship, as we, as we close the service today?
our Savior, you are worthy of it all. Give you the highest praise in this place today. You are so worthy of all of our praise. 
To God be the glory for the great things He has done. Would you repeat after me, church? Lord, would you bless me? Lord, would you expand my territory? Will you be with me in all that I do? Will you keep me from harm, trouble, and pain? Lord Jesus, would you help me to multiply in this season? Multiply my gifts and abilities. Multiply my finances. Multiply everything you have called me to do. All the wells that you've called me to dig, where the wells have been filled in by the enemy, help me, strengthen me to dig new wells by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Great service today, everyone. God's presence is here. I hope you leave this place different. I think if you don't leave this place different, you might need a, a heart restart. <laughs> I don't know if we have a defibrillator, but if we, if we need a defibrillator, maybe we'll need to use one. But I'm believing today that all of you are leaving filled by the power of the Holy Spirit, ready to dig wells, ready to multiply, ready for all that God has for you. You've thrown your Dixie cups in the garbage and you're going... You're going to the waterfall ready to receive all that God has for you, that new outflowing of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. I want to bless you today as you leave. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. In the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus' name, and the whole church said, Amen. You are not dismissed. You are sent to go make a difference in your family, in this world, and in this nation. In Jesus' name, you are sent.